One of the first things I remember when I met Dave was his enthusiasm, uh, what a kind person he was, and how strong an advocate he was for persons with mental illness. Davis's big passion has always been, if this is a brain illness, and this is an illness that anybody could get in a sense, why is it that it's treated as if it's this horrible thing we should never talk about? You need good education and good information to battle stigma because there's nothing else that does. Um, stigma grows out of ignorance and people's fear of things they don't understand or they haven't experienced. We had a, uh, a cable show at the Division of Community Mental Hygiene and uh, it was called Something of Substance. It was a show that went to essentially cable networks and we would focus on mental hygiene issues, you know, uh, mental illness, uh, uh, mental retardation, and, and substance abuse issues as well. And uh, when Dave heard that we had this uh, capacity, I mean, he was, he was knocking at a door. He said, we have to do some shows on, on stigma. Uh, they, were, they were real fighters around the proper and sensitive and appropriate portrayal of mental illness and education about what uh, about these illnesses and the experiences that people uh, go through and, and that families go through. He has experienced mental illness within his own family and he, and he knows it uh, firsthand and knows the struggles and so so he has an empathy uh, for the people that suffer from mental illness and their family members and and that really comes across in, in everything that he does. Based upon their experiences with their own children, Helen and Davis knew that they needed to get involved in order to make sure their children could have the best life possible. And in the process, it became a much greater mission for them because they realized that families throughout the country, literally, were not being treated as equals in terms of addressing this problem. Davis's advocacy started long before I ever met him. He was one of the original founders of uh, the uh, National Alliance for Mental Illness on Long Island in, in uh, Queens and Long Island chapter. I think Dave brings accountability um, to meetings that uh, people should participate, people should care, um, and uh, he clearly, you know, certainly uh, to Clubhouse of Suffolk from, uh, from the start. Um, is, he's very clear with his expectations, and, and Helen as well. What is it that needs to happen that will raise the bar for everybody that's suffering from mental illness? What is, what, what is missing in the services? And they realized that in fact what was missing was safe, affordable housing, a real sense and belief that people could live in the community and not have to be in institutions the rest of their life. They were appalled at the idea that that was institutional living was the sole expectation for people with serious mental illness. And they really made that their mission, to have community resources that would help people stay out of hospitals and live the most productive life possible. You know, Dave made a point, you know, uh, in uh, whoever he met, he, he made a point of reaching out to people and, and uh, um, letting them know that uh, he wanted to work with them in terms of acquiring his goals. You know, what's really special about him is that he really cares about what happens, and he's a straight shooter. So if he doesn't like what he sees, if he doesn't like what you're doing, he tells you straight out. And someone once told me that um, in order to be an effective advocate, you really have to be out there. And people need to expect that you'll be at the meetings, and you'll be at their speeches, and you're going to give them feedback. And so Dr. Pollack does that. He's devoted his life to, to being places where it matters. The powerful thing about their work, I guess, that I haven't said, is that they've worked together, that they've been such a special team together. When I've been with uh, Dave and Helen, whether it's in formal meetings or informally, they bring uh, an absolute compassion, an unending commitment to uh, wanting better for people uh, who have had mental illnesses. I think one of the reasons why both she and Dave are effective in motivating others and in helping others is they, they never give up. They always have a sense of hope that things can get better. And I think that's something that both Dr. Pollock and his wife Helen have in common is that they don't just accept things at face value. They push further and they, they want answers and they don't understand why things can't be done. If they can visualize it, it can happen. To be able to assure that people with uh, with mental illnesses and, and uh, uh, difficulties with housing, to be able to have homes, to be able a place to go, to be able to find purpose, for that to drive them 
for so long, really now, uh, over 40 years, dedicated to that kind of advocacy is unbelievable. It's incredible. The work of building caring communities would not be possible without volunteers who come at this with both competence and compassion. And I want to join in uh, acknowledging the leadership role that Davis and Helen Pollock have served over many years to help build better communities for New Yorkers. Thank you so much for the years of, of effort you've put in to changing our field for the better. We are so honored to have the opportunity to celebrate all that you've brought to this field and all that you've contributed. Uh, you've made a difference in the lives of so many people and we are so tremendously grateful to you for that. Dave and Helen, congratulations on this award. You need to know that you are an inspiration to us all.